So today's flower is Black Eyed Susan's, and in just a second I'm going to switch my camera angle, hopefully, um, so that you can see what I'm working on. And I have a couple tips about botanical drawing for you that are really helpful whenever you do a flower that is an elliptical shape like a Black Eyed Susan or a daisy, or echinacea, or I mean almost anything that's round that has all of these petals coming out of it, this is going to be a good tip. So I'm going to use my Sharpie just to show you how to draw it, and then I have some watercolors here. I have, so I'm, I'm setting a personal challenge for myself because I have so many palettes of half-used paints, by which I mean, let me adjust this a little bit. By which I mean, this palette is like four years old and the paint in it is so, it's also old, but the cool thing about watercolor is you can still use it. Um, but I just found it when I was cleaning out some art supplies. So I'm like, well, this paint is still perfectly good. I should use it. Same with this one. And then I have, I wasn't planning to show you this, but since I've already embarrassed myself by not knowing how to use technology, I have like this little china plate which is just covered in watercolor. This is the lid of a plastic box. I was desperate one day for a place to, to put things. Um, this is the lid of a different core set that I had. And the cool thing about it is that the lids of them come, um, you can see like they're kind of like bubbles. So there's plenty of places to mix paints in them. The thing is that like I'll mix up colors and I'll really like the color. So I'll just leave it on the palette and then I move on to another painting and it just is like that for a while. So anybody else a messy creator or are you guys all neat and tidy? Okay, So here's an example of a cone flower. So that's not a black eyed Susan, obviously. That's more like echinacea. But the tips I'm going to show you today are... Um, useful for any kind of cone flower, any kind of shape like this. Okay, so let me get these things out of the way for a minute. And like all wildflowers, you know, there's a few different varieties of each wildflower that we work on. So I'm kind of doing like the basic one, the generic one. Brooke says that her desk is so, so messy. Amy too. Okay, good. So it's not just me. I like that. Of course, you're only seeing like this part of my desk and the rest of it is so much messier, but I'm just going to pretend that that was the worst of it. Okay, so I got my Sharpie. So when it comes to drawing a black-eyed Susan, it's an elliptical flower and we can look at it like if you were, you could pretend that you're looking at it straight down, right? And so that would just be a circle. And then the center of it would be like that. So that would be if we were looking at the flower straight down. And then what if you're looking at the flower from the side, okay? So I am guessing if I was to ask you guys right now to draw a Black Eyed Susan from the side, um, some of you would be able to do that confidently and some of you would struggle with having it look realistic. So what I'm going to show you is how you can automatically just a couple little tips to make it look more realistic. So we're going to start just by by drawing this from the top. And let's pretend that our flower has, oh, I don't know, let's say it has 12 petals, okay? So I'm gonna just grab this pen because it's gonna make a narrower line. And I'm going to start drawing the 12 petals as if they are just lines. So I would do this with pencil if I were you, so that once you go over it with pen, you can erase the pencil and it'll look really tidy. But because I want you to actually be able to see what I'm doing, I'm just going to use pen, okay? So if I go, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, okay? So I'm just going to keep drawing these rays straight through the center like that until we have 12 of them. And that way they're pretty evenly spaced, okay? And then we're going to just, let me just show you a thing I like to do is usually draw the shape of the petal out ahead of time a few times just so I know what I'm doing. So it could be like that and then if I add this little edge it kind of looks ruffled. Okay, It's a good idea to kind of get used to how you're going to draw your petals. Um, oops, sorry, I wasn't on camera. Man, talk about being authentic. You guys are getting like the full experience today. Okay, well look, this is what I did. <laughs> Now let me show you how I did it. Uh, so if you want to draw a petal with a little ruffle to it, you're going to draw one line of it out like that. 
and then you're going to come back and kind of follow the line of that one okay and come back and it tapers like that it almost looks like a, a lip right and then when we draw this bottom line like this suddenly this petal is curving up right so this is kind of you can see curving up like that and we could do that on the other side of our flower too draw the line like this and then we're just going to put in the lines there for the ruffles so I, I like to sometimes just practice this the specific elements of the flower that i'm doing but since we're drawing this straight on like we're standing above a black eyed susan in a garden um, it's going to be pretty basic they're going to come out they're going to taper out from the bottom and they're a little bit wavy and they tend to be a bit narrower than like an echinacea okay so you can just draw some ruffly lines sort of and we are going to not go too much further than the edge of that circle so that each of the petals is roughly in the same place okay and I'm just going around the lines that I drew, the, the ray is the center of the petal. Okay, and the cool thing about when you have these guidelines, when you have the rays that you're gonna draw with or the circle guideline that you're gonna draw in, it's gonna make everything look like it's the same size, which is good. Um, it gives you the right amount of perspective. And when we go and switch to looking at it from the side, you'll see how helpful that can be. Okay, so you might wanna put um, like a little bit of a ruffle here following those lines okay so this is a pretty easy way to draw a black eyed susan and honestly even though it's simple it's still pretty and if you were to erase your pencil lines and uh, paint over that with watercolor it would be really easy to um, add some color to it all right so betsy says these are great tips i love watching you draw betsy i am so happy to see you here now what i would love someday everybody betsy is it's an honor to have her here because she is an expert on, um, let me change this. She's an expert on botany and the mixture of science and art. And she is so knowledgeable about flowers and about plants. And I think that we should have her as a guest speaker sometime. So Betsy, let us know if you wanna come on and tell us a little bit about flowers sometime. All right, let me switch back. Look at how, what a pro. Did you guys see how fast I switched from my face back to the paper? Betsy, you weren't here for when I couldn't get the live video to start for 20 minutes, so that's a little tongue in cheek. Okay, so we have our, our basic flower, you know, like looking from the top straight on down. If you wanted to add little details, you know, the, the center has um, a bunch of little dots and lines in there, and, and I'm just doing this the most simple way possible, just the easiest way to fill it in. Okay, so just lots of little dots there. Okay, Betsy says she's in. All right, guys, we're going to get a, a botany pro lesson, which is great. Okay, so that's fine. That's all good. Now you can imagine if I could erase these Sharpie lines, the guidelines, it would look even better. But what if we want to do something so it's from the side, so that it looks a little bit more lifelike and realistic? We're still going to be using guidelines, okay? So we're still going to be drawing with a guideline and with these rays drawn through the ellipse, but we're gonna do it from the side. All right, so let me go ahead and draw that ellipse here. Okay, here we have it, and I'm gonna make it so that the center, instead of being dead center looking down, the center is, let's say it's right here, okay? And again, I would draw these guidelines in pencil, okay, so that it's um, easy to erase it Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just connect that line there and that line there. Then of course you could erase this because you wouldn't be able to see through it, okay? But go with me here. And then right through that center of the cone, we're gonna draw our rays again. So we're just gonna go out like that and like that. So there we have our, our main two rays and then we're gonna go ahead and draw those so that we get the 12 that we had before. Three, okay. And I'm just drawing those right through the center, like that, and like that, okay? So what we're gonna start to get here is a little bit of perspective. 
It means that the flowers that are, are towards us, that are at the front and that are closest to us, those petals are going to be a little bit bigger and the ones in the back are going to be a little bit smaller. And because this is from the side, this is also where drawing petals like this kind of comes into play a little bit more. Okay, so I can draw my petal right down there to that guideline. Okay, we're still going to follow the guidelines and kind of come back up like that and put a little ridge in there. When I do the one back here though, okay, it's going to be a little bit smaller. Do the one over here. I'm going to have it from the side, so we're going to see the side part of it. Now, because I'm doing this in Sharpie and I'm including all of the guidelines in here, it's going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to see the petals just as they are. Okay, but basically they're coming out and then they're falling down. Okay, and they're going to get smaller as we head to the back. You can't really see them all, just a little glimmer of them. Okay, so what we have here is something that is coming from the side, and you can still do those, those dots right here in the center, and of course, like I said, this would look better if we didn't have all of the Sharpie guidelines, so I'm going to do that next, but I just wanted to take you step by step through what that would look like. Okay, so in the comments, let me know, are you following along? Are you drawing with me? Is this clear so far? Okay, what, do you, what are your impressions so far? Let me zoom out a little bit. So the cool thing about learning perspective and learning how different flowers work and, and how to draw different flowers is that it's really useful when you go to paint them. So always in the back of my mind, when I go to do a painting, I'm thinking about the shape of that flower and how it would work um, so that when I paint something like this, okay, oh, whoops, the camera's backwards to me, okay, I have drawn a circle, I better go like this, okay, I have drawn a circle here, okay, and you can't see the back petals, but you can kind of get an understanding now for how the circle was there and the cone was there and the different flower petals come out of here, okay? And because you start to think about the shapes when you're painting. So what I'm gonna do now is just sketch it really lightly in a waterproof pen and then show you how I would go ahead and do a watercolor painting over that. And also let me know in the comments if you would like me to do anything again or demonstrate something again, because I'm happy to do that, especially since you've been very patient in my technological difficulties. <laughs> Okay, so Shanna Lynn says, I always watch and then draw and paint after. That is really um, a smart thing to do. That's, that's what I like to do as well when I learn is kind of get the tips from everybody and then go ahead and, and actually do it. Abby says, drawing with some, but I'm such a beginner, I'll watch it again. That's great. You get to hear all my awkward jokes twice, Abby. <laughs> I'm going to keep this one here. So again, this is not a Black Eyed Susan, but it is a cone flower. So it's, it's a good one to look at. And I'm gonna grab my Micron pen and just zoom out a little bit here. There we go. Okay, and grab my Micron pen so that I can just sort of draw loosely, um, have a sketch to go in. So this circle is like this, okay? And then we have the cone is coming way up out of there and I like that look and I'm gonna do that but instead of having these very round petals, I'm going to have the Black Eyed Susan petals. So let me just... type something real quick. Okay. So Black Eyed Susan, it usually, it doesn't have a cone that is quite like this. It, it has more of a... Um, I mean, there's different varieties, so it could have, but usually it's like a little bit flatter. So let me go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna have my circle for the petals. I'm just gonna draw that really lightly and you might not be able to see it all and that is okay. Because the point here is to do the um, painting for you. Okay, and when it comes to the center, I'm gonna draw like sort of a flat elliptical shape just to have that guideline there. And then I'm going to draw my rays through, okay? And I think I'll do more than 12 petals this time. Um, 
because why not? So I'm still drawing my ray through like this. I could actually use a pencil, it occurs to me, since I'm doing it so lightly anyway. Okay, so I have my, my center here like this, my wider circle like that. Here are my rays that I'm drawing through, and I'm just going to go ahead and put a few in here. This is helpful also. Um, this way of drawing these elliptical flowers is helpful when you are going to kind of make up flowers or doodle flowers because it's good to have the, the rules, so to speak, in your head so that you know how to break them. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to start drawing some petals. Come down like that. And there's another helpful little tool that I like to use or a tip, which is that you can... Kind of go around your flower and and draw petals in different ways so that then when you go back you can draw one petal coming from behind the other one and to make that look realistic you're going to draw right to the edge of that pick your pencil up and hover over the line and then drop it right back down again and that's called ghosting and that way you keep your lines nice and even so let me just zoom in a little bit more on this so you can watch what i'm doing and then hopefully that focuses okay and then um, you can see how I'm doing these petals. Okay, so Bobby says, what kind of pencil do you recommend? I'll have to watch multiple times. Okay, so I recommend any drawing pencil that is an HB or even a little bit heavier, a 2B pencil. The one I'm using is a black wing. I think it's a 2B. Um, so who can tell me in the comments? I know that some of you know this, but what is the what what do the letters stand for um, when you're buying a drawing pencil and it goes from say the set you draw you you buy goes from six H to six B? What does that stand for? Does anybody know? So I'm just drawing each of my petals here. Gonna go down a little there. So the rays add a really good, um, like a guideline, I guess I would say, but you don't want to follow them exactly because it's not like in nature we are getting, you know, cookie cutter flowers. So you do want to add a little bit of swiggly lines, a little bit of wiggles in there. Okay. Make it look like an organic shape. All right, so there we have the rough outline of the pencil petals. And what I would do next, especially as a beginner, is I would find a pen that is waterproof. And so I'm using this Micron 05. And then you wanna go and start drawing over your pencil lines. And then when your pen is dry, erase that, and you'll have a really nice outline to paint in. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this with my pen, and I don't wanna go over the outlines this time. I just wanna go over the actual petals. Okay, and Sandy says the hardness or softness of the lead. That is right. So if you're going to draw it with a 6H pencil, that would be a really hard lead, okay? And it would be a very faint line. So the faintness of the line is good, but it will leave marks in your paper if you use it too hard. So I usually recommend an HB, which is right in the center, or a 2B, which is what I usually draw with, and it, it smudges more, you know, it's a little bit a little bit darker, a little bit softer, but it doesn't mark the paper at all, and that's really good for when you are, are doing um, watercolors or painting on things so that you, know, you don't have those gouges or lines in the paper. Okay, so I'm just going over my petals now, adding a little bit more ruffles to them as I draw them. Okay. And I love adding ruffles to things. Oh, you know what we could do? We could also add a little twist to our petals. Let's do that. So to add a little twist to my petal, I'll just show you over here first. Okay, we would have our petal come down like that. Okay, kind of meet there. And then like that, and then the petal has twisted over, so this is the underside of the petal. So that's one way you could do it. Let me do it again. So you draw your line like that. Then you have the other line come over here and kind of meet, I would say about two-thirds of the way down. And then you're going to draw a line right out of here and taper it down to the point. And then when you add your shading to it, okay, do that. Of course, it doesn't have to be a really big point like that. 
we could draw it a little bit more um, rounded, a little bit more realistic like that. So I think I'll do that over here with one of these little guys. Gold, uh, Black-eyed Susans often have a little twist. So I'll go like this here. And then go ahead and twist it down like that. And that will be more obvious also when we go in with our paints and add some detail to that. There we go. So I'm still just filling in these petal lines with the pen. And I really like um, micron pens. I like the thicker lines of the micron pens. I tend to push hard, too hard when I'm drawing. So uh, the thinner ones kind of die on me really quickly. And my favorite drawing pen is probably the Unipen. Um, and I have a whole supply guide about the drawing tools that I recommend. So I will put a link to that in the Facebook group. And I'll make a replay of this available too. Okay, so I have there, there are my ink lines. Um, Abby says, having the guidelines really helps me. I struggled with the poppy with the second drawing. Very new to drawing. Yeah, it's it's difficult, you know, and the poppies are, they're, they're easy to follow if you're just going to do like, copy this line, copy this line, and then that's okay. But when you have guidelines like in this flower, it does make it a lot easier to do. And now I am looking for an eraser. But if you know me, you know that Things are messy and I might not find one. Let's go to the bag of tricks <laughs> and see what we have. Okay, there we go. We have a little eraser. I would say that I'm going to clean my desk off and it'll make a big difference, but I think we all know by now that that's not true. And I'm adding a little circle here at the top and then just filling in this little cone at the bottom. So when I know my pencil or my pen lines are dry, I'm going to go in there with my eraser. You want to make sure your your um, pen is is definitely dry so that you don't smudge it and go in here and it already looks better I did draw that original guideline in pen so that's not going to come off but that's okay it's just an example okay so things start to look pretty tidy right away now last night we talked about a way that you can add depth and shading to something and that was through contour lines and contour lines the way that we did it yesterday and I'll do it on this petal, was to draw them, you know, right along the the um, the shape of the petal and the way that it's twisting and turning. And we can do that here, and that would look really pretty. But I just wanted to point out that there's other ways that you can, you can have um, shading and mark making and contour lines. So one way you could do that is something called stippling, which is doing a lot of little dots. And the higher the concentration of dots, the darker it is. And as you move out, it gets a little bit lighter. Okay, and you could also do cross hatching. So we already have some lines here, and that is again the more um, directions that you go in as you layer your pen, the darker it'll be. And so those are three different ways that you can add shapes and lines to your work. Okay, so I'm going to grab my watercolor paints here, and instead of doing lots of line making or stippling or anything, I'm just going to do watercolor and I'm going to use the wet into wet technique and grab my, one of my brushes here. I'm going to use my Anna Mason set um, by Rosemary and Company and this is a number five spotter brush and it is lightning out again and thundering and raining. Okay, so I already had some pretty orange gold colors mixed up here some yellow some reds oh that one was green who knew this is what happens when you pull palettes out that you haven't used in a few months because you're trying to use the paints okay so for each petal that we do I'm going to go ahead and just paint it with water okay so I'm painting it right in the lines there with just water like that. And then I'm going to grab some of the paint I mixed up and drop it in. And for this specific flower, I think what I'm going to do is pull it all the way out and blend it throughout the petal. And if you have a little bit too much, you can dry it off. And I'm going to pull a little bit of that up so it gets lighter at the edges. 
And then I'm gonna drop a little bit of that darker orangey color right here at the center where it's coming out from the center and blend that with a damp brush. And then I'm gonna let that dry. But you can see that that's just one layer. And if I zoom in on that, even though that's just one layer, it already has a nice range of color. Okay, so with that zoomed in, I'm gonna do it again for you. So I have just clean water on my brush and I'm going to do a petal that's not directly next to this one because while that's drying, the colors will bleed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this petal and I'm just painting it with water. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of color, drop it in here, and pull it all the way out throughout the petal. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of that darker orange on my palette and put it just here where it's coming out of the center. Okay, I'm gonna just dab my brush off a little bit and blend those together. I don't want like a very strict line where it goes dark yellow, light yellow. Okay, I want it to have a nice blend to it. And while it's wet, you can always go back in and add a little bit more. Okay, just like that. Okay, so that's gonna look really pretty. Um, quick vote, let's see. Would you like me to go ahead and paint this entire flower or would you like me to show you different techniques of shading with the pen? Okay, so let me know, we'll see what everybody has to say. I'm just gonna fill in the center real quick so that that can be drying because the center is gonna involve a little bit more detail and we're just gonna start it with just that light yellow. So one of the hardest things about watercolor painting is learning how much water to use, how much paint to use, and to get that balance just right. And to get that balance right takes practice, okay? And I know that's not really what people like to hear. They want a, a quick tip. And there are tips. You know, you don't want it to be dripping. You don't want it to be puddling. Okay, there's there's tips. And, and I go into that more in other lessons, but really it's practice and it's learning about the balance because a drop of water on something that's very small can make a huge difference. Okay, so we have, let me see the answer, shading with just the pen, okay, all of the flower, all of the flower, and both sound interesting. Okay, well, I'll just do it all. How about that? <laughs> How about I do this? I'll do half of the flower watercolor and half of the flower pen. All right, then we can see. Let me zoom out a little bit. Hopefully when I zoom in like that and it's close, you can kind of see what the brush is doing and get a little bit more detail. So I am skipping every other petal, okay? And that is because I don't want them to bleed into each other and, and mess, look messy. Of course, if I was, if I was you know, in a hurry, if I wanted to do this fast, I could do a light wash over the entire thing. But I do believe that uh, flowers look better when you work on them little by little and really give each petal um, an attention to detail you know you make each each petal its own little painting almost and they're unified through their shape and through the technique and through the colors you're using okay so these two are dry enough that they're not going to bleed right now so I'm going to go ahead and go in here and just fill this with water so the key word is glisten. You want things to glisten, but not be puddling or pooling. If you have a little too much water, you can dry your brush off on a paper towel and pick some up with your brush. It'll act like a sponge. Okay, so we'll go in here. Like so. I was so happy. I saw so many of you yesterday go ahead and post on Instagram and in the Facebook group about what you were painting and drawing and it just made my day to see that. I think it's just so cool to know that all around the world something as little as as an Instagram challenge that I start here. Um, somebody in India is painting it and somebody in England is painting it. Somebody in Texas is painting it. Like it's just it's so neat to me how art and creativity and you know when you paint something beautiful like a flower how that just unites people it is it is so cool and, and 
you know, I think it also, even though it's virtual and I know everybody is sick of virtual things, but it's still, it, it makes you feel like you have a community and a group of people. And I think that's really neat. Okay, so I'm just still working my way around every petal. I think you can probably see why this is very therapeutic for me, um, especially when you have an outline already. And so you know that the drawing is good and you can just go and enjoy the painting process just by dropping colors in. If you wanted to get a little bit crazier and do things um, a little different, you could paint them different colors. You could, you know, you could do anything really and, and that would be fun. So now that we have these, um, Joanne says, sorry, I don't know how to post. And that is so okay. You don't have to know how to. If you have a Facebook, um, if you're in the Facebook group, Joanne, there's a button that just says to start a discussion or start a post. And you can attach a photo there of what you're working on, which is fun. Just take it on your phone, go into Facebook on your phone, and that makes it pretty easy. So we have our first layer on these petals. Now there's a couple different things you could do when it comes time to do the second layer. And I will not be going through the entire process because it will take a long time, but I'll, I'll just show you. So let's go back to this first petal that we did. And this is glazing. When I go ahead and I'm going to just paint this whole thing in water again. So again, I'm covering that paint with clear water. And I'm going to go ahead and add another layer where it's a little bit darker there. And what glazing does is lets you build up the colors. And because watercolor is transparent, you can kind of see through them and it just makes it so rich. So you can probably see already that this petal looks much richer and has a lot more depth. And that's because I'm taking my time and building it up layer by layer. Okay, so when you build it up layer by layer like that and you let it dry in between layers, you're going to get a much richer look to it. The other thing you could do is go in with a smaller brush. So let me grab a smaller brush here and grab a little bit of this dark color and you can actually paint the contour lines in instead of drawing them in. So if I was to go here, I could add the little contour lines the same way that I would with a pen, but this way I'm painting them in instead. Okay. Like so, just like that. And that adds some cool detail as well. So now let me go over to the other side of this flower and just let's talk about um, actually drawing with pen. So I'm just going to use one size. If you have a bunch of different size pens, I encourage you to use different sizes. But I'm just going to go ahead and use just the one size for right now. And follow the lines of the petals again. So with these contour lines, I'm just going to follow the petal the way that it's moving. Again, you can do like little squiggly lines if you want to give it a little more shape. And a general rule of thumb is that petals are going to be a bit darker when they're coming out of the center because not as much light can get to them there. So knowing that, you know that you want to have your lines be a little bit thicker. So on these petals back here, I'll just do the contour lines like so. Okay, And there'll be a few more lines coming out of the center. All right, now on this petal, how about I do some stippling? So for stippling, it is again just dots. And the first couple times I painted poppies actually, I decided, this was a few years ago, but I decided I would, I would do all of the shading through stippling. And about halfway through, I deeply regretted that because it takes a really long time to do all of the little dots. But where there's a higher concentration of them, where there are where they're closer together and where there's more of them it's gonna appear to be darker okay and where there's a fewer of them it's gonna be lighter so you're creating those shadows and highlights just through stippling okay so there's an example of the dot so I could spend a lot longer doing this but I think this video would get boring if I just made you watch a video of me doing little dots on things <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Um, if you wanted to try cross hatching, you would practice putting your pen to paper at different directions and different angles. And again, same thing with the stippling where there's a higher concentration of marks, it's going to appear darker. Okay, so I have them spaced very close together here where I want it darker. And then out here where there's going to be more highlights, they're a bit more separated. Okay, so, and you know, there's no right or wrong way 
for what you choose to do. This is this is all about enjoying the creative process and just making marks, which is fun. Okay, so that where that where that petal kind of dipped up and around. Oh my goodness, can you guys hear the rain? It's pouring out, and it looks like it's about 8:30 at night. It's so dark out right now. We're getting lots of storms in Texas in the last couple of weeks. So to build your layers, you just put your pen at different angles, and drop that ink down. Okay, so there's some cross hatching. If I go back over to this watercolor one, we could draw our contour lines right over that watercolor or do any of these techniques over it. And when I first started drawing flowers and painting them, I did a lot in, in line and wash where I would do things with ink and watercolor. And that's because it's a lot to focus on if you're just going to jump right in and, uh, and um, paint a flower with no lines, with no guidelines. So I like drawing it first and then painting it if you're a beginner. It just gives you the confidence. Bobby says, would you use different techniques on the same flower? And I wouldn't do anything like this. Like this isn't my style to have like half pen and half watercolor. Um, you can definitely use different techniques though. So, you know, and also you can do whatever you want. If you want to do something half watercolor and half pen, go for it. Um, so when it comes to watercolor, I use a lot of different techniques on the same flowers. When it comes to pen, I usually kind of choose one and stick with it, but that is just a stylistic preference. So let me see if I if I combined them here, for example, so let me combine them in this and I'm just going to start out with some contour lines, just some, you know, following the, the way the petal is going. Okay, and down here. And then let me add some stippling in as well. So that is going to make it look even even um, darker down here and give it some more shading. Especially here where the petal is folded and we want it to, to have that contrast in light to dark so that we know it's folded over. Okay, so yeah, I mean you can absolutely combine things if you want to. So there we have it, my friends. Lots of different techniques for working on a black-eyed Susan. Okay, when we have... Okay, a, a quick refresher. So you want to start with an elliptical shape and then the center ellipse is here. You draw the rays as guidelines where the petals are going to go and that lets them be evenly spaced throughout. Okay, if you want to do it from the side, same thing. You're going to start with the ellipse, draw the center, and then do the rays and then follow those guidelines to draw your petals. And then when we get over here, we've been talking about, again, you know, this is from the side, but watercolor, um, wet into wet, blending, glazing, and then a few different techniques for pen work. So that's a lot to cover. And let me switch back here. Hello. Um, that's a lot to cover. And I hope that you have learned some things from it and enjoyed learning some tips. Let me know in the comments what is something that you learned today or that you feel a little bit more confident in. I would love to, to know that. Um, I have a lot of fun. I always enjoy kind of stretching myself and remembering what it was like to paint them at the beginning and to remember what it was like to um, work on, on like one skill set at a time, you know. And again, I'm completely self-taught. So if you are struggling or if you feel like, you know, you, you, you don't know what, what to do next or how to paint or how to draw, that's kind of what this challenge is about. I think that everybody has a creative streak and, you know, we just need to be encouraged and we need support as we create and um, I think that everybody has that ability in them and my goal here is to help you with your skills and to help you feel more confident as you learn and go about doing this. Thank you everybody. I can't wait to um, continue this. Have a great day. Bye!